so I said that I would do this video of my top 10 favoriteest shows to binge watch on Netflix. Now, I actually kind of had a hard time narrowing it down, which is really embarrassing considering that means that I watch way too freaking much TV, but you know what? I'm I'm proud of my binge watching abilities. So I did give myself a few uh, rules to kind of stick to just to give you guys a little, or get, really to give myself a bit more structure uh, when I was picking these things. So I did make sure that the top 10 shows that I picked are a complete series. So they're no longer on the air, they're no longer adding any new episodes there. They're completely done. And all t 10 of them have at least four seasons, which I feel like is a good amount of you guys you can get the full story of everything. They're not like shortened shows by any means, so I thought that was pretty good as well. And also I did include two little bonus shows um, that are still on the air, but they have several seasons already on Netflix that you can binge watch for days. So um, I thought that was like a little bonus. If you guys like these and haven't seen them before, um, maybe it'll give you something else to be addicted to. I also didn't include any of the actual Netflix shows, so I didn't include like Orange is the New Black or House of Cards or anything like that, just because while they're not on TV, they're still going, so I, I don't know. I didn't include any of those either. Alright, so my top 10 are in no particular order, so let's just get right into it. Number one is Ghost Whisper, which, okay, so maybe number one is kind of in order. <laughs> Ghost Whisper, I've talked about several times before, is my favorite TV show ever. It was my first ever favorite TV show. I never said that about anything before. I watched it like during my formative years. It started when I was in middle school and it ended somewhere in high school I believe. It stars Jennifer Love Hewitt. She uh, can see ghosts and she helps the ghosts cross over into the light by giving them closure with loved ones who they didn't get to say something to or they're just at, they're not at rest. So she helps them uh, move on and I just really like it. I love Jennifer Love Hewitt. I know a lot of people say that she isn't that great of an actress, but I I love her. I think she's wonderful. So there's number one. Number two is Nikita, which is actually fairly new to me. I watched it for the first time over the summer, I want to say, and I didn't watch it at all when it was on TV, but it always kind of intrigued me because Maggie Q is like really pretty, but she always kind of plays these like fierce sort of roles. So I don't know, that, that was kind of weird. But I love Shane West, and once I knew that he was in the show, I was like, oh, I'm already sold. Basically, Maggie Q plays Nikita, who was... I guess you could say drafted from prison to become an assassin for the government. During the show, it takes place when she has escaped this thing called Division, which is the, which is the group of people who took her. She's the only person to ever escape Division, and now she's like plotting her revenge against them. So that's kind of what the premise of the show is, and it, it's it's really good. Like trust me, it doesn't sound it sounds kind of odd, but it's really good. Oh, I forgot to mention, Ghost Whisper has five seasons and Nikita has four. The next one is kind of an entirely different direction from all the other shows I'm going to mention here, but it's The West Wing. It had seven seasons and it's a political drama. Now, it doesn't sound like something that would typically appeal to me, but it is such smart TV. It's clever, it's witty, it's quick, it's just, it's very, very good. It takes place um, in the White House and it's it's all of the president's staff, so his chief of, his chief of staff, his chief of, that was way chief of. Now I don't know if I'm saying things right. Whoever Leo is, he's the chief chief of. St it's really really good. It's older, so it might not appeal to some people, but I love it. It's very very good TV. So just just tr try it out. Try it out. By the way, the president is played by Martin Sheen, Charlie Sheen's father. So I think that might kind of <laughs> amuse some people. Also, Rob Lowe is in it, and I think a lot of people like Rob Lowe. So you know, there's there's another thing there. Oh, also, Allison Janney is brilliant in it. It's another thing to keep in mind. I think. So that's all I can think of right now. Okay. The next one is Numbers, and Numbers had six seasons, and I, this is another one of those shows I started watching middle school and it kind of kept going until I was in high school, but I love this show. So it's about two brothers, Charlie and Don, and Charlie is this brilliant mathematician. He, he went to college when he was like 12, okay, that's an exaggeration, but he was really, really young, and he's brilliant. He's a brilliant mathematician, and he helps his brother, uh, Don, who's an FBI agent, solve crimes, and you can just sort of like see the dy dynamic between the two of them. Their dad is played by Judd Hirsch, who I think is how you say his last name, who is just a very appealing actor. He's on forever right now. He's, um, what's his name? What's his name? 
this show is really cool. If you like uh, crime shows, it's another good one. Now the next one is Gilmore Girls, and I know you all have heard of Gilmore Girls. If you haven't watched Gilmore Girls, I don't know what you've been doing with yourself. But in case you don't know anything about it, which I highly doubt, but it stars Lauren Gl Glam, <laughs> Lauren Graham, and Alexis Liddell, and they play mother and daughter, and it just it's about their lives and the things they go through, and it shows Rory growing up from high school to college, and it just it's nice mother-daughter sort of bonding show. Not not necessarily that you have to watch with your mom or anything, but you know, it's it's good. The first season is like my favorite thing ever. It's amazing. And I love Dean. Dean and Rory are like the cutest thing ever in season one anyway. And I just love them. And I still think it's funny that Jared now plays a guy named Sam, his brother's Dean, even though he played Dean on Gilmore Girls anyway. It's a good show. The next one is Leverage. Now, I don't think Leverage was given enough credit because I will say, I'll admit, I never watched it when it was on TV, but now that I've seen it like three times, I love Leverage. I think it should just, more people need to watch it, and I think more people need to give it a chance. I think it is so lovable. All the characters, all the characters are really, really lovable, and their chemistry is like solid and there's it's like unbeatable i think it's kind of silly but it's so entertaining so if you haven't heard of leverage it's about okay it starts off as one honest man he's an ex insurance investigator and then four criminals so there's a hacker a grifter a thief and a hitter they form this team and what they do is they're like modern day Robin Hoods where they take from the rich and give to the poor sort of things so they help the little people. I think there's a lot of character development that goes on that I think is just really awesome to see and I just love them all and I wish it kept going because when it ended I still think they could have done a spin-off with Parker, Hardison, and Elliot. Just saying. If I didn't mention I think I did but Leverage had five seasons. Moving on to the next one is Alias which also had five seasons and it stars Jennifer Garner. I think it was what gave Jennifer Garner um, her, her her Hollywood shot. <laughs> I could have worn it that way better, but you know what I'm talking about. It's the first thing that put her in the limelight, and it's another really good show. Basically, Jennifer Garner plays Sydney Bristow. She's an agent, or CIA agent. She's working in what she thinks is like this can't think of the word, like an, an underground sort of division, but it turns out that she's actually part of what she thought she was fighting. She's actually working for the bad guys when she thought she was working for the good guys. So it's all about her being a double agent. It's really intense, it's really crazy, just like nah, all the time, but Michael Vartan is in it too, and he is so beautiful. I love him. I want to marry him, which I've talked about before. He's just so pretty. <laughs> Okay, let's just move on. It wouldn't be right if it didn't include some sort of medical show, so I decided to go with Private Practice, which had six seasons. It was a spin-off from Grey's Anatomy, if you didn't know that. It starred Kate Walsh, and she decides after she leaves or Grey's Anatomy, her character just moves out and goes to join a private practice with her friend and a bunch of other doctors. It's a really good show. I actually like it more than I like Grey's. I just thought it was really good. And it had six seasons again, which was a really solid run in my opinion. And it's just it's worth giving a shot. The next one is Fringe, which had five seasons. And I talked about how I didn't really care for the last season, but the first ones were really, really good. It's kind of a different sort of show for me anyway. It's based around Olivia Dunham, who is an FBI agent, I believe, FBI agent, and she teams up with Walter Bishop, Dr. Walter Bishop, his son Peter Bishop, and Agent Farnsworth, or Astrid, um, who is also another FBI agent. The four of them and their, I don't know if he's, uh, Captain Royals, they sort of form this thing called Fringe Division, and they investigate all the things that you can't explain. So all the weird things, weird accidents, and weird like mutations and stuff that you couldn't explain in the real world. So they investigate those kinds of things and it's, it's really cool. It's, again, it's not what I've, I normally watch, but I thought it was really good. And lastly for my top 10 is Medium, and this show had seven seasons, which I actually didn't realize it had so many. Um, it stars Patricia Arquette, and she basically is a woman with psychic abilities. She dreams about things, and then she helps the police solve crimes using what she knows. So 
that's pretty much the basis of that one. Pretty simple, but it's a really good one as well. Alright, so those are my top 10, but again, I have two little bonus shows for you guys. So the first one's going to be no surprise at all. It is Criminal Minds, which is my favorite TV show right now and has been for a few years. If Ghost Whisperer was still on the air, I wonder which one I would like more. Anyway, so Criminal Minds, if you haven't seen it before, which shame on you if you haven't, um, it's about a team of FBI uh, behavioral, behavioral analysis who go out and solve crimes based on behavior. They don't actually study the crime itself. Usually they get to the minds of the actual criminal to create a profile for the police and them to find whoever did whatever they did. Usually it's murder or something gruesome like that. It has nine seasons currently on Netflix and they are in the 10th season on right now. And right now Jennifer Love Hewitt is actually on Criminal Minds, which is like my two worlds colliding, <laughs> but I freaking love it, it's great. You'll notice a lot of um, cast changes throughout the nine seasons of Criminal Minds, but I, I really enjoyed the show. I, I think it's great, it can be rather dark and a little disturbing sometimes, but I love it. It's awesome. And the last little bonus show is Supernatural, which I'm sure you guys have at least heard of. It's kind of like a cult classic sort of thing now because it's been on for so long. There are nine seasons on Netflix right now and they're in the 10th season just like Criminal Minds. And if you haven't seen it, it's about two brothers, Sam and Dean, who fight monsters. And that's how it started anyway. I couldn't even explain what it is now. I mean, they're, they have gone through so much <laughs> since the beginning. They've each died like how many times. And now once you get like season four, you guys have probably seen that there's an angel, Cass or Castiel. He doesn't come until I think season four, but he's a very big player in the show now. It's just, it's a really good show. I think you guys will really like it. It sounds kind of odd and I never wanted to watch it, but once I did, I got hooked so quickly, like so fast. And I've seen the whole series like at least three times. Same with Criminal Minds. I'm, I'm a little bit addicted. So those were my top shows to binge watch on Netflix. I hope you guys liked this and let me know if these are like the kinds of shows that you watch, if you have any recommendations for me. Although there's a great chance that I've seen <laughs> a lot of the ones you'll probably tell me about. But you know, anything is fine. Especially if they're like full se or full series on Netflix, feel free to shout those out because I'm, I'm always on the hunt. Alright, that is it. Thank you guys for watching. Bye!